When enabling upscaling, the go-to option for most people is setting it to the quality mode. But is that actually the best mode to enable? With the latest upscaling technologies like DLSS 4, lower quality modes have improved substantially, and using lower modes at lower resolutions is also now viable. So in today's video, I'll explore what the differences are between the three main DLSS 4 presets and evaluate whether maybe a lower preset actually makes sense visually. I'll be going through a range of different examples at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p, all captured on a GeForce RTX 5090 at a locked 60fps. Like our previous upscaling examinations, various settings such as motion blur and chromatic aberration have been disabled, and the same sharpening setting, usually zero, has been employed for all the examples. Let's get into it after this. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet and their brand new range of Lightbase 600 and 900 series cases. The Lightbase 600 is available for Lightwings LX 120mm PWM fans, three of which are reversed so they look the same throughout the case. While the more affordable DX model forgoes the pre-installed fans for those of you that like to bring your own. Both models feature a huge LED light bar that spans the front and top, featuring over 1.2 meters of ARGB LEDs. And you'll also find glass panels at the front and side for a stunning panoramic view of all your PC components. What we love most about the light base though, is the ability to orient the case multiple different ways using relocatable feet. You can invert the case in literally seconds. There's also room for two 360 millimeter radiators, full size GPUs with vertical mounting options and loads more. So for a full rundown of what the Lightbase 600 and 900 series has to offer, please check the links in the video description. One of the most impressive aspects to DLSS 4 is how it eliminates TAA blur in a lot of situations, preserving full texture quality as you move through the game world. This gives DLSS 4 a sharper overall presentation compared to previous versions and even native rendering. The good news for gamers is this is largely a universal aspect of the technology that applies across all presets and resolutions. So whether you use 4K quality or 4K performance, or 1080p quality or 1080p performance, the texture quality and blurriness of the image is very similar. With this version of DLSS, you're not adding blur when you turn down the preset to performance, and this makes those lower settings more viable. The only main impact to texture quality at lower DLSS modes is slight amounts of graininess that can be introduced in motion, though on the whole the ability of DLSS to reconstruct textures is very impressive. At 4K, there is little to no texture quality loss using performance or balanced compared to quality, while at 1440p and 1080p, I only spotted a few differences comparing performance to quality. Balanced is very viable at these lower resolutions in this aspect of image quality, so if overall blur was one of the main reasons you've steered clear of lower DLSS modes, DLSS 4 should have you reconsidering that choice. Image stability is another area that really impressed me with DLSS 4, and this applies to most of the available presets. At 4K in particular, there tends to be very little difference in overall stability between the quality and performance modes, which makes the lower modes viable in many gaming scenarios. Occasionally, I was able to spot a slight degradation in fine details, pixel level wires and lines, that sort of thing, but even with relatively fast motion, like driving a car, the 4K DLSS performance mode holds up well, and you won't notice much of a downgrade from quality in this area. At 1440p and 1080p, it was a little different as some aspects to fine details are degraded at the lower modes, which are rendering the image well below 1080p. Reconstruction of wires in motion isn't especially amazing at these lower resolutions in general, but there is a small quality loss when dropping from quality to balance to performance, with more aliasing and sizzling along those edges. In situations where at 4K these modes held up quite well in terms of preserving these elements, at 1440p and 1080p you'd probably want to stick to the higher quality modes. With that said, the general stability of the image isn't substantially different between these modes, even at 1080p. If there aren't fine elements in high contrast scenarios on screen, it's unlikely you'll notice huge shimmering or sizzling issues with DLSS 4, even on the performance mode, though the faster the motion is, the more likely you are to spot problems. This isn't like FSR 3, however, where the image starts out with poor stability and it degrades further when turning down the upscaling mode. Disocclusion is one of the key areas that is degraded when turning down the upscaling mode. Across the three resolutions I examined, disocclusion artifacts get more noticeable at each progressive step down, with longer blur trails and more pixelation around moving objects. This is because when an object disoccludes, the background it reveals is rendered at a lower resolution using the performance mode compared to the quality mode, and this 
brief moment of low resolution rendering can be noticeable, especially around your character in a third person game or around a swaying weapon in a first person game. Some of the examples we've seen where disocclusion is especially noticeable, like The Last of Us Part 1, using the performance mode compared to the quality mode creates a grainier trail around Joel's head in motion. Balanced is an improvement compared to performance, but isn't quite as good as quality. How sensitive you are to these issues will be a key determining factor in whether you should reduce the upscaling mode or not. At 4K, this issue is noticeable, and it tends to get worse at 1440p and 1080p, so the performance mode at 1080p has worse disocclusion artifacts than any of the modes at 4K. This makes lower modes at lower resolutions less suitable, but it does depend on the type of game being played. Titles like Indiana Jones, for example, it's not a major concern, and disocclusion isn't seen in every frame. And some third-person titles like Dragon Age The Veil Guard handle it a bit better, so it is a case-by-case -case thing. Hair quality is closely linked to image stability, so DLSS tends to handle this well across the three main quality modes. At 4K, there is little difference in hair moving from the quality mode down to performance, and it's only in the absolute finest strands where the performance image can be less stable, like we see in Dragon Age The Veil Guard's character editor. In general gameplay, it's very difficult to notice any downgrade to hair in motion. At 1440p and 1080p, it's also quite similar to what we saw in the stability section. Balanced looks pretty similar to quality and retains a lot of the detail and stability we expect. Performance, though, can look a bit grainy in motion, especially when hair strands are moving. In third-person titles like Horizon Zero Dawn, where your character pretty much always has exposed hair, performance mode may look a bit too ugly compared to the other settings, but in other titles with less hair, it's going to be more usable. Particle quality is a simple one. Lowering DLSS modes, especially at higher resolutions, has little impact on particle quality itself, and these elements remain stable when lower modes are used. This is important for games where rain is involved. However, at lower modes, the challenges we saw with disocclusion come into play. Performance, for example, creates a grainier image behind the snow in Horizon Zero Dawn compared to quality, and this is more noticeable at lower resolutions like 1440p. Occasionally, with pixel or near-pixel level particles, the spores in The Last of Us as an example, using a lower DLSS mode reduces the quality of the particles, increases pixelation, and can make large spore clouds a bit blurrier, but you'll only notice this to a significant extent when using the performance mode. Lowering the DLSS mode affects transparencies in motion, especially those that contain fine detail. Holograms that contain fine lines will look more pixelated when using the performance mode compared to the quality mode, especially at lower resolutions like 1080p. This isn't a huge issue while stationary, but elements that either move or rotate by themselves, or move due to character motion, can be problematic on those lower resolutions. Similar issues are seen when transparencies contain fine patterns, like in this cyberpunk example, where different DLSS modes create different pattern artifacts. This sort of pixel level detail doesn't play nicely with lowering the render resolution and trying to upscale. However, not all types of transparencies suffer in this way. Fire, for example, looks excellent at 4K, whether you use the quality or performance modes, and turning the resolution down to 1080p, it's only here with the performance mode that the occasional bit of grain or pixelation becomes noticeable. Along with disocclusion, foliage quality is one of the areas that gets the most noticeably downgraded when running DLSS at a lower mode. The main pain point is grass, with lower modes making grass look grainier in motion, especially if there is a combination of character movement and grass movement from wind. This can be spotted even at 4K when shifting down from the quality mode to balanced and performance, though it's more noticeable at lower resolutions like 1080p. At 1080p, even the quality mode can produce grainy grass, and this only gets worse when using the performance mode. As many games include high-density grass these days, and this can cover large portions of the screen, the reduction in grass quality is probably the most noticeable downgrade in many titles. With that said, DLSS 4 is much better at handling grass than previous versions of the technology, so relative to DLSS 3, even the performance mode can be an upgrade at times. However, at 4K, grass quality is generally pretty clean using the quality mode, whereas the performance mode looks a bit more like it's been upscaled. While grass can be tricky for upscalers, other types of foliage tend to perform well, such as trees, branches, and leaves. Across the games I looked at, there was much less of a difference in tree quality between the various modes, even at lower resolutions, though of course occasionally you could see issues with stability. The most likely issue to crop up is reconstruction of fine branch details on trees without leaves, though super thin branches can look a bit more aliased at lower modes compared to higher modes.
Fence quality relies on two areas, disocclusion and fine detail reconstruction. With both areas seeing quality reductions at lower DLSS modes, it's no surprise that fence quality can become worse when using the performance and balanced modes compared to quality. This isn't always apparent at higher resolutions like 4K, but it can be more noticeable at 1080p, especially when choosing to use the performance mode. In examples like Spider-Man 2, where we have overlapping wire fences, higher modes have less aliasing and grain, as they can better handle the rapid disocclusion that occurs in motion. Quality, for example, has an overall higher resolution appearance as a result. In Starfield, using the higher modes resolves the fine mesh details better and creates less shimmering in motion, though across most of the configurations tested there was some visible issues in motion. In situations like The Last of Us where we have a different kind of fence, higher upscaling modes are more resistant to pattern artifacts, which we see here on this fence towards the end of the run when viewing the performance mode. With fine line detail close together, this seems to be a problem for lower render resolutions in motion, and can be seen in things like metal stairs, railings, and even some patterns on textures like cloth for example. What you won't see much of is a difference in image quality while stationary. There is really no point comparing upscalers in this way as every mode is able to accumulate data over many frames and resolve a high quality image. The performance mode is therefore just as good for screenshots as the quality mode or even DLAA. However, standing still is not how you play most games, so it's important to move around a bit when deciding what upscaler settings are right for your gaming session. It's been interesting to compare the three main DLSS4 upscaler modes in this way because it often shows how little of a difference there really is. In previous versions, if you turned DLSS down to the performance mode, you'd often be left with an unstable image with many issues in motion. This is why most people turn upscaling onto the quality mode and don't venture any lower. The image quality just doesn't hold up, especially at popular resolutions like 1440p. But with DLSS 4, depending on the game scenario and resolution, those lower modes like balanced and performance are much more usable than ever before. Several key areas to image quality are largely unchanged if you decide to use a lower DLSS setting. DLSS 4 doesn't generally get blurrier when run using the performance mode compared to quality, and overall image stability between those settings can be quite similar. This means that regardless of the setting, DLSS 4 typically produces an image with high resolution textures and without annoying shimmering or sizzling artifacts. The areas where lower DLSS 4 modes tend to reduce image quality are disocclusion, grass rendering, fine detail reconstruction, and transparencies. Switching down to the performance mode compared to quality can make these areas appear grainier and lower resolution, which can be visible depending on the game you're playing. In a title like Star Wars Outlaws, which has impressive wind effects for its grass, lower DLSS 4 modes make grass a bit more pixelated, especially as you move around. In The Last of Us, disocclusion becomes more noticeable when using the performance mode. But then in a first-person game like Starfield, with different sorts of environments, the difference between quality and performance is a lot smaller visually. This means that the optimal DLSS4 mode will vary on a game-by-game -game basis. In titles with lots of grass or heavy disocclusion artifacts, playing at a higher render resolution, and so a higher DLSS4 mode, will be preferable to avoid noise and grain in the image. This is why some people still use native rendering, as they find these issues especially noticeable in the game they're playing, and these days DLSS4 DLAA delivers excellent image quality. In other situations, you can really dial up the level of upscaling and still receive excellent image quality. Across the many titles I've played with DLSS4 enabled, I tended to change my mind on the mode I wanted to use depending on the circumstances. Some titles I don't want to go below quality, but in others performance is more than suitable. As a general rule of thumb though, I think at a 4K output resolution, DLSS4 balanced or performance is where the sweet spot lies. At 1440p, you'll typically want to stick with either the quality or balanced modes, and at 1080p I'd be leaning more towards quality, with the occasional title being suitable using balanced. At output resolutions below 4K, the issues with the performance mode become more apparent, which is why I tend not to recommend them. But even with previous versions of DLSS, I probably wouldn't have recommended, say, the bounce mode at 1440p, whereas today it's much more viable. Of course, in all situations, the lower the amount of upscaling you do, the better the image quality will be. I didn't find any situations where DLSS4 bounced would look better than DLSS4 quality, for example. But as doing more upscaling increases performance, you always want to find a suitable balance between FPS output and image quality. Each step down in DLSS4 mode from quality to balance to performance tends to provide a 10 to 20% performance improvement, especially at higher resolutions and provided you aren't CPU limited.
Just make sure that if you are CPU limited that you're not doing pointless upscaling. If you see no performance improvement switching DLSS from quality to balanced, you're probably CPU limited or at the very least aren't being limited by render resolution. In which case, don't bother using balanced or lower upscaling modes in an attempt to chase more frames. Try and set that upscaling mode as high as possible. So anyway, that's it for this video, just looking at the differences between DLSS4 modes. We'll probably come back and do a similar version for this with FSR4, provided that you know this video does well and it justifies the effort. So stay tuned for that on the channel shortly. Apart from that, if you do want to support Hardware Unboxed and the testing that we do right here on the channel, then please consider supporting us via our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some pretty cool benefits like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, BTS content. Steve's recently posted a couple of those for you to check out and plenty of other good stuff. So thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.